Hello and welcome to Game Theory. I'm your host, Sam Vecini. Today, we're going to break down Jalen Suggs, the Orlando Magic guard, who has been one of the best defensive guards in the NBA to this point. In my opinion, I think I can make a case that he has been the best. Certainly a lot of the advanced metrics back that up. Additionally, the Orlando Magic have the number one defense in the league on their way to a 12 and five record to start the season. They've been one of the best stories across the league to this point. And I think Jalen Suggs, behind Franz Wagner and Paulo Bancaro has been the third most important piece of that resurgence. Additionally, he's averaging 12 and a half points, four rebounds, three assists, shooting 36% from three, 43% from the field, 83% from the line has been an enormous, enormous factor in getting them easy transition buckets. Something that we'll talk about over the course of this video as we dive into his tape. The tape today, we're going to break down a game from last week against the Toronto Raptors, where I thought we saw a number of the things that has made Jalen Suggs one of the most intriguing players to track now moving forward among the younger guards in the league as it refers to impacting winning basketball. He pushes in transition. The Magic have really found a way to unleash what makes him special athletically. And it's really, really exciting to see in this game against the Toronto Raptors. He ended up going for 18 points, four assists, three rebounds, going six for 10 from the field and did it all in just 21 minutes because this ended up being a blowout in the third quarter. So come on, dive in. Let's jump in and talk about Jalen Suggs. Hit the subscribe button on the video though before we dive into the tape. Okay, here we go. Jalen Suggs. For people who have not watched the Orlando Magic this year, this is Jalen Suggs, number four for the Magic. And the thing that he has done best offensively this season, in my opinion, is we're starting at 1140 left in the first quarter, right out of the gates here. He just pushes in transition constantly. If he sees an inch, if he sees that there are four guys below the free throw line, one, two, three, four from the opposing team. He's just going to trust his speed at the end of the day. The farthest guy back here is OG Ananobi. He's still 40 feet from the rim. Suggs is already here. He's going to trust his speed that he's going to be able to get downhill and get past Pascal Siakam, whose momentum is pointed that way. Scotty Barnes and Jakob Pertl, who are essentially even with him. And Dennis Schroeder, who's just smaller than he is. And once he gets ahead of steam, there isn't really much that Schroeder can do. We didn't get a great camera angle on this one, unfortunately. But you can see how quickly he's covering this ground, right? I don't think this is the case where Toronto is coming into this game not understanding what Jalen Suggs is capable of pushing in transition. I think that he is just covering ground so quickly. He's able to pick up this ball here like a football player, tuck it and go. The football player thing is obviously an allusion to the fact that when he was at Gonzaga, you could not go a telecast without hearing that Jalen Suggs was a high school quarterback and a very good one in the state of Minnesota. And he's just going to go and get all the way to the rim. That play right there is such an indicator of what he's going to bring through the rest of this game. It was energy. It was aggression. It was constantly trying to get downhill in order to pressure the Toronto Raptors and make their life hell. This next one here is just about a minute later. Suggs is here. And this is going to kind of be an errant pass by Scotty Barnes. Actually, no, it's just a fumble by OG Ananobi uh, on a pass by Scotty Barnes. You're going to see Wagner's going to pick this thing up. He's going to get it to Suggs, who's then going to just quickly get that thing to Paulo. So what I want you to see here is, again, just his instinct in transition, right? His instinct is to get that thing off quickly, make Scotty make a decision here, right? When you start moving the ball like this, you're going to create confusion in the defenders. You're going to create all sorts of difficult moments. 
So he doesn't even dribble this ball once. He's going to pass this thing, and he's going to make Scotty deal with a downhill force in Paulo Bancaro, or he's going to trust that if Scotty fully commits to him, Paulo can hit him back. And honestly, I think Paulo probably could have just stood to hit him back here on like a quick little wraparound to Suggs right here. But play results in a foul. Again, we're getting up and down. We're creating easy transition buckets. That's what Jalen Suggs has done a phenomenal job of offensively this season. Now we're about the next possession down the court offensively. We're going to see an empty side ball screen. The Magic have run a lot of empty ball screens this year. Here, you're going to get a short roll to Goga Batadze, who's going to hit Suggs for this wide open three, right? So what are we looking at here? We're looking empty side action where the Raptors are basically playing a high ice. I'm a little bit surprised they're playing as high as they are here with OG and Anobi on Anthony Black, who's a non-shooter. This is pretty close. And then look at where Pascal Siakam is. He's trying to head off the short roll here. What I love about how Anthony Black handles this is instead of going toward the middle of the court, he ends up driving baseline here to open up that pocket pass angle, right? He's opening up that pocket pass right in to Goga Batadze to get that thing into the middle of the court. And once you do that, because Anthony Black has drawn two defenders onto him as Ananobi tries to recover back, someone's going to have to come to the ball, which means you have two guys on the backside, one, two, guarding three guys for the Orlando Magic, which means decisions are going to have to be made, right? So here on the short roll, this is what we talk about with the short roll all the time, how it creates a real marginal advantage for the offensive player. It creates a three-on-two opportunity here. So Scotty Barnes decides to play up here and try and cut off the Franz Wagner angle, which opens up the Jalen Suggs kick out where he's wide open. And look, that's Franz Wagner. That's Paulo Bancaro. Those are the two best offensive players for the Orlando Magic. They've made the right choice here. We need to get the late contest on Suggs and hope that he misses. But the fact that Suggs is now able, at least on a reasonable level, he's hit 36% from three, to hurt defenses like this is a huge, huge piece of his development here moving forward. Now, the next time down the court by Toronto, he comes down. Pascal Siakam, if you noticed on that last play, he got the late closeout here on Suggs, which means he is going to get an opportunity to run the court and to get downhill and to try and get a mismatch, right? And that's what he does. He isolates Jalen Suggs. Suggs is here. Siakam is here, right? Dennis Schroeder realistically should have thrown this ball a while ago. Schroeder should have thrown this ball right here. Pascal has him sealed. He has all of this open space that he can throw this pass into. Schroeder needs to throw this ball right now. Even a split second later. You can see Suggs is coming around. He's trying to make it a little bit tougher, but because Schroeder is late, now you're giving Jalen Suggs an opportunity defensively as a switchable, tough, physical defender to get around, right? So here, you can see Siakam. He's feeling on his back where Suggs is trying to get to. And he's pushing him this way, right? Siakam started here. Suggs tried to come around his back there. So Siakam is just trying to seal him off, right? He's trying to make it so that he can create an entry pass here. 
But because Schroeder is late on this entry pass, he again gives Suggs the time to get in there, get the steal, diving onto the court to get this steal, by the way. And then here's the other piece of this that I find amazing. What I want you to do here is I want you to watch Jalen Suggs. Watch his eyes. Watch how he's trying to essentially at this point now after I'd say right now at this point, he's kind of trying to goad, in my opinion, Dennis Schroeder to throw this ball. He knows what he's going to try and do, whether or not it's going to work up for debate, right? But he knows he's going to try and fake like he's swimming over the top this way and then come around this way. He's essentially baiting Schroeder, right? So he's going to come around this way and then he's going to swim right across his body, right? Like he's a defensive end. I keep using football terms. I swear I'm not going to do that throughout the whole video, but watch him use this swim move here just to get across, use his hands, use his left hand to get around Siakam's body on the inside side, and then he's going to get this steal. Ball's going to go out to Paulo Bancaro. Kick out to Franz Wagner, and the game is now rolling for the Orlando Magic, right? And that's a huge piece of what Jalen Suggs can bring. He's going to bring energy. He's going to bring switchable defense. He's going to bring hounding point of attack defense, and he's going to create action plays. That's a huge piece of what he's been able to do so far. So this play here, we're going to watch him on defense, right? This one, I think that he probably strategically the goal here is, in my opinion, I don't know this, you'd have to ask Orlando, to go under all Dennis Schroeder actions, right? They were trying to bait Dennis Schroeder into shooting. So Suggs here is going to stay at home just in case Schroeder here gets enough of Franz Wagner in order for Siakam to get loose. And if they have to switch, Suggs will call out a switch. You can see here his eyes looking at this action. And trying to evaluate what he's going to have to do. He stays home here for a second. Knowing that they're not treating Truder as a shooter, which the efficacy of which can be debated. The Raptors run a screen action here to try and get Schroeder either potentially downhill or to get him an open shot. And Suggs is just a little bit flat-footed here. He decides to get the late contest. They end up giving it up an open three. I think that the Magic are probably pretty comfortable with him just getting a late contest on that shot. But nonetheless, I think that was the only bucket that got scored on him in the whole game. I thought it was worth putting on, though, because of that. So here, as you can see, again, Suggs has been switched on to Siakam here. Actually, I think he's just picking up Siakam here in transition. And Ananobi is just going to drive in. He's going to try and hit Pirtle here as the trailer. And then Suggs is right here to grab the rebound and just look at the eyes immediately with Suggs. Again, the whole purpose of Suggs being out here offensively is to try and push. He's going to catch. And while his feet are still in the air, feet are still up in the air, the eyes are already looking down the court to see what's going to be available. He lands, recognizes that Anthony Black is out. And I apologize again, but this is a touchdown pass. This is a touchdown pass right off of the rebound. That is fantastic. It's right in stride. That is exactly what you're looking for to try and create easy offense. Again, Suggs has done a really good job this year, I think, of pushing in transition, trying to create easy offense for an offense that has its that has had its struggles 
over the course of the season in the half court because of some of their lack of shooting on the perimeter outside of Paulo and Franz. So here, you know, we're at nine minutes left in the first quarter. All of this has happened within the first three minutes of the game. So Suggs here, he's going to come around. And this is where you can see that he's just going to be really feeling it tonight. So they're going to come in transition. You're just going to run a quick, again, empty side. As I've noted, Orlando is running a lot of empty side actions. The league in general, it feels like this season, has really started to run a lot of empty side actions, even more than what they've run previously. And because you have four defenders here, really on the one side of the court, Suggs is going to have some options. Now, they decide to go kind of under this screen, I would argue. I know that Siakam ends up trying to get a contest on it, but you can see his first inclination here. The right foot from Siakam is actually beneath the lower foot of Batadze as the screener. Suggs just decides that he's going to pull. And look, this is a bank. Sometimes you're lucky. Sometimes the ball is going to go in. He nails it. And this is where, you know, things are just going to go right for him. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Suggs, again, next time down the court, maybe? No, two possessions later. Empty side action again, right? And this time, he's just going to try and keep OD Ananobi on his hip and try and draw defenders. So this time, he doesn't quite have the same advantage that he had last time, right? So Batadze set the, sets the screen. This isn't a dribble handoff. He sets the screen this time a little bit lower. He sets it like right in this range here. Because of that, Ananobi decides to go over the top of this screen to try and force him into this range, force him into the help, where he has Scotty Barnes here. He's got Pirtle here at least. Schroeder right now is at the elbow. We've got Siakam here waiting on the backside of the defense. And as soon as he sees that, he lets Batadze clear out. Roll to the rim. And now he's going to try and keep this advantage where he's going to force Jakob Pertl to stay attached to him in some way because he has Ananobi on his back. For as long as he can keep OG Ananobi on his back, right? This is what we talk about when we talk about putting the defender in jail in ball screens, right? He's going to try and keep Ananobi on his back. And as soon as... Pirtle leaves to go and deal with Batadze goes this way. If he was to do that, Suggs would be able to get downhill immediately and go. But he has to keep Pirtle somewhat engaged here. In my opinion, Batadze, you can make two cases here. You can say that Batadze should probably clear out a little bit this way to open up the angle, or you can make the case that Patadze should do what he does and try to seal off Pirtle so that Suggs can go around and try and use that seal to finish at the basket. Instead, he tries to do the seal, right? Where he's going to try and occupy Pirtle so that Suggs can go around this way. problem with this is that Suggs is not the best finisher around the basket still. He's still working on that piece of his game. I don't love that. That's just a general me thing with this player. I think that, you know, Batadze is a guy that has been there for about a year now. You know, he got there 
if I remember correctly, midway through last year. He's been a really effective defensive player for the Orlando Magic since Wendell Carter has been out. But it's just a ball screen synergy thing, right? Where these two guys might not have a ton of experience together. But when he has Ananobi on his hip here, Ananobi is on the right side of his body, right? If he goes to seal here, Ananobi is just going to stay on that right side of his hip. And it's going to be hard, I think, to be able to get the kind of lane that he needs to be able to get to the rim. Honestly, it still almost kind of works, but Suggs ends up not feeling like he has that pathway to the rim, right? He probably should just throw this up at the basket or he should just throw it back to Paulo on a jump pass here, but he's not looking there. It's probably a bit aggressive to ask him to do this. He ends up trying to throw. I actually don't really know who he's looking at here. I, I can't tell if he goes up for the shot here and Ananobi kind of swats it. I think that that is what happens because you can see here, Suggs' eyes are on the rim. And I think that Ananobi catches a piece of this. But again, that's the risky run when you have a all world six foot eight defender with a seven foot two wingspan is the guy that's on your back. So run this thought experiment with me. Let's say that Batadze ends up clearing this way. Eventually, you're going to put Pirtle, number 19 there, in a tough spot. The further away he clears, Batadze that is, the harder it is for Pirtle to guard one on two, which is basically what he has to do here. He has to be responsible for Batadze and Suggs, while Ananobi is stuck on his back. This is what people talk about with spacing, right? You would love to see defenders be put into more space where they have to guard over a wider swath of area. If Pirtle follows him to the corner here, easy downhill lane where now you're pressuring Pascal Siakam and you might be able to as you drive, whip a cross corner kick out there. But because Batadze goes for the seal, it's a little bit tougher. A little bit tougher of a finish. Ends up being, I think, blocked. Not totally sure if that's a block. Regardless, ends up being zero for Orlando on that stretch. That's the next step for Suggs, in my opinion. I love what he does here to get Ananobi on his back. I love how he actually kind of navigates being in this much traffic. This is a situation where I think certainly in his rookie year and even early last year, Suggs would have struggled with having three bodies in this area while he's trying to keep his dribble alive. This is growth to me. This is real growth that we've seen from Jalen Suggs over the course of the last, I would say, year. Next goal for him will be, in my opinion, is he sees Scotty Barnes here, which I think it's reasonable for him to have Scotty Barnes in his peripheral vision here, to continue to drive. See how deep he takes Scotty and then hit a jump pass kick out here to Ben Carroll. Suggs is young, still only 22 years old. It's hard to be a young guard in the NBA. My guess is that he figures that out at some point. Next up here, about seven minutes left in the first quarter. This is just him creating, right? So their initial action here 
This is a horns set. Like a horns extended that turns into a double drag almost. We have Bancaro here. Ananobi is on Suggs. Scotty Barnes is on Bancaro. Pirtle is on Batadze to start this possession. Toronto plays this for the switch, which is what you would expect from having Scotty Barnes and OG Ananobi, guys that are big and are able to deal with Paulo Bancaro, because ultimately Bancaro is the guy you're trying to slow down with Orlando. Suggs decides to kind of string out Barnes here and go around a sort of rescreen from Batadze. I don't really know. I don't think that's the actual definition. I would say that's just resetting and going into a second ball screen. He finds Batadze. Goes around Batadze, kind of a looping angle, right? Like he's not fully downhill at this point. He's going from here. He's going to end up like kind of around here and then go into the paint that way. But this kind of showcases the speed that Suggs has, right? Like this is real speed to be able to get into the lane here. Scotty Barnes is a big dude, super long. I don't love Scotty Barnes defensively on the ball. I think he's been tremendous off the balls. We broke down in a video a little while ago. But Suggs recognizes an advantage here. Gets the screen, realizes that he's downhill now. You can see that he's looking up now as well. He's trying to figure out, okay. I've got the low man here as Dennis Schroeder, who is the worst possible low man in this situation for the Toronto Raptors, a real advantage of having a bunch of guys that are six foot four or taller on the court. You can throw Anthony Black into the corner there as the quote unquote lead guard. Real advantage having, you know, four guys that can really run this action, right? You could run a double drag for Polo. You could run a double drag for Franz or Anthony Black, or you can run it for Suggs. So now he's just trying to figure out how these guys are going to play this, right? Who's going to come and help? As soon as he sees Dennis sprint, right? Dennis comes here and goes quick because he sees all of this open area. It's the right rotation from Dennis because I don't think that Pirtle at this point is going to be able to cover all of this open space. Siakam can't leave Franz because that's way too easy as a same side open three point kick out. So Schroeder has to come. And as soon as Schroeder comes, Suggs recognizes it, cross corner kick out directly into the shooting pocket. Anthony Black just misses. And that's a piece of AB's game that he's going to have to improve. But that's the right read. And it's tremendous play by Suggs. Next up here. Suggs is communicating on the back line defensively here. He's dealing with Chris Boucher on the backside. You can see here he's telling Cole Anthony, hey, you're going to have to rotate as he sees this action here between Pirtle and Barnes. He's saying go out, go out to Cole. Cole goes out. Basically, Suggs is saying, now I'm responsible in the one-on-two here. One, two, I can handle both, and we can rotate around. That's the way that you want to guard that. They make the shot anyway because Scotty's just way bigger than Cole. And now again, looking for the home run pass immediately, right? Suggs has made the Orlando Magic's life much easier on offense this season. Even if the counting numbers don't say 
you know, he's dishing out a crazy number of assists, even if they don't say he's scoring a crazy number of points or has been wildly effective as, you know, a scorer himself. I do think he's made the life easier for them on the offensive end of the court. So here gets the easy transition bucket again, just trying to go. That's it. Four minutes left in the second. Now Bugs is in the corner here. Run that back from the top real quick. So the way that this should be matching up is Schroeder there, man there. Siakam should probably be over there on Franz. And then there's a trailer coming up the court, I believe. Which is why we're waiting here. No, that's a lie. So that is, I'm confusing the Wagner brothers. So that's Mo Wagner. So this matches up actually quite easily. So Schroeder, Ananobi, Pirtle, Siakam, and then Trent on Cole Anthony. The reason I'm trying to be specific about this is something you'll see in a second. For reasons kind of beyond my comprehension, As Paulo decides to kind of run through the play here. OG comes up and Pirtle is way too deep in the paint right now. Just way, way, way too deep for a guy that is ostensibly defending Mo Wagner. Mo Wagner can shoot that. Like he's a 36% three point shooter this year so far. Mo can knock that shot down. And I don't totally know why he decides to play this far off, but because he plays that far off, it forces this rotation upward from Schroeder. And then it's going to force the X out from Pirtle. You would like to see Jalen Suggs make that shot. Again, not the most consistent shooter, but the mechanics I think are looking pretty clean there. He used to have like kind of a weird like leg flare on these open shots. You can see there. Just a good clean look at the mechanics, right? Big ball dip to get into rhythm. A little bit of an inward knee bend, right? But not a lot to draw some power. Clean release. Balance is strong. I think he's a 36% three-point shooter. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I think that he's pretty clearly gotten to the point where he can knock down shots now. This next one here. This is a tough one. So, Suggs is on the backside. He's responsible for Gary Trent. Gary Trent is a real shooter. You have to be accountable to him. As soon as Batadze communicates that, you know, I've got the paint right now, you can see Suggs kind of go back. Simultaneously, you can see here that Scotty Barnes tells OG and Anobi to come through for a screen, right? So look, he's looking at OG telling him, hey, come through. OG comes through. Screen for Barnes, just a quick little exchange, right? Todd's here is responsible for Scotty Barnes. And Caro is responsible for OG. He comes back. 
I think that Batadze thinks that this is a mismatch, that he has to be fully accountable for, that Franz on Siakam is a mismatch. And he just loses track of where exactly Barnes is. And because of that, He allows Suggs to be in this like disaster spot here. On some level, you would probably like to see Suggs like get a little bit physical here and like try and wedge out Barnes as he comes in. But again, if he tries to wedge out, That is a very easy kick out cross court with the same exact mechanics that he uses here to make this pass here to Barnes. He could very easily whip that across to Trent. So Suggs is in no man's land here. He's in a no win situation. It's a tough defensive possession. I think that's more brought on by Batadze's choice to double than anything. This one here, Suggs. Sets a screen, comes off. This is the one that I think got Toronto fans very mad because Suggs plays with a lot of energy and flexes a bunch. That's kind of who he is. So this one here, what are we running? This is an inverted 1-4 or 4-1 ball screen where you've got Paulo coming across. You've got the screen here from Suggs. Suggs is going to hang on this screen here for a minute try to make contact stays still afterward he's trying to force the switch here his whole goal there in my opinion is force the switch to get siakam off of paulo and get paulo into this zone right where he has a mismatch now on gary trent that's the advantage of a good screen here this is why i get frustrated with bigs who don't screen and don't make contact well, right? Like one guy that I tweeted about last week was DeAndre Ayton. I think DeAndre Ayton does not make good enough contact on his screens. Because he makes contact here on this screen and because he forces Siakam to try and get over the top of this and forces Trent to stay that far away, he gives Bancaro a chance to like really string this thing out. And then as Siakam tries to recover out, I think that Siakam should just probably peel switch this and hope that Trent can hold up. But instead, they communicate between the two of them because I would imagine that that's their defensive principle in this situation. Hey, we're going to fight over the top and then we're going to recover. This is a ridiculously hard closeout for Trent. Suggs recognizes it. You can see immediately his reaction initially is to try and roll off of this screen, right? Like he goes downhill and tries to burst, right? Instead, he thinks better of it and spaces out as he sees that these two are communicating that they're not going to just peel switch this. If it's a peel switch, it's great to try and roll. Because what you're going to see if it's a peel switch is that Siakam, by going over the screen there, has created this laneway. Instead, by trying to communicate, Suggs recognizes immediately. That's high basketball IQ by Suggs. Forces the tough closeout. Honestly, I think Trent does about as good as you can do closing out here. This is a long closeout for him to get to Suggs, right? Suggs drives, he gets back in front of him and then just bullies his way through to the rim. I think that Trent does a pretty good job. I'm going to be honest with you. I think he did about as well as he could have given the position that he was in. Opens up the angle, forces him back to where his help is in the middle. He has Siakam here. He should have another defender here. He definitely has another defender here in Scotty. And it didn't matter. Suggs just bullies his way through, right? Like, this is the addition of strength to Suggs' game. 
Suggs has gotten stronger. He's more capable of finishing at the rim. And then you've got the flexing, right? You've got him flexing back here. He's pumped. He's excited. He's giving energy to his team. I love it. He's talking to somebody in the stands. In this next one here, we've got like a minute to go in the second quarter. Does a great job here cutting off this potential transition opportunity. And a shooter decides to drive him, and it's just like, nope, no chance. Don't need help. Truder, as we saw during the FIBA tournament, he's fast, man. He'll get by you, but this is Jalen Suggs, great point of attack defender. Paulo decides to go for a wrap up here. I actually don't have a problem with because he will win that jump ball between him and Truder if it comes to that. They just yell out to peel switch, right? You can see now. Bancaro calls out switch. Sug stays with Ananobi. He gets the tight close out, right? Like on some level, he has to stay like in the lane there just to be like an active presence, right? Because he sees that Wagner here on this exchange on the backside. Where Siakam is coming through here. Trent is lifting. And Anobi is filtering to the corner. He has to be there because if he's not there, if he follows in Anobi immediately to the corner and just stays attached, let's say he's out of this play here and he's out of the paint, his feet are outside of the paint, which could have been very easy as he's following through Ananobi. Then Scotty Barnes, who's an awesome passer, has all of this space to throw this pass into Siakam, right? Which is an easy ball for him. To close out, not much more you can do on that. Great possession to try and cut off the initial drive. Helps on the cut through. It's about as good as he can defend. And now he's asking for the ball. Come in again. And he's trying to do it all over again, right? So next possession here. Another 4-1 inverted ball screen. And this is where we can talk about Suggs just getting way too wild, right? This is, this is where he's feeling himself and getting a little overconfident, right? I love the action. I love the inverted 4-1 set. We are trying to create all sorts of potential mismatches here. Suggs calls it out, actually, from the jump in this play, right? He's saying there, as you can see, here to the corner. Watch him. He's moving his arm that way. He's clearly yelling to Batadze. Clear to the corner, right? That's where Batadze goes. Batadze walks over here to the corner. Goes up, sets the screen. Paulo just denies the screen. Kicks it out to Suggs. Yakum, I think, does a really, really good job there of containing him. And he just tries to throw like an insane like no look sort of spin there. I mean, to be fair, like he did confuse Scotty at least, but yeah, this, this is the wild stuff that Suggs could stand to excise, right? Like play a little bit simpler of a game, continue to string out Siakam here, right? As soon as you string him out, you've got Paulo coming back up. Still 13 seconds left on the shot clock. You do now have the mismatch that you wanted in Trent and Paulo. Hard to recognize that immediately in the moment, I'm aware. But this is like a this is a no window pass, right? Look at how look at how tight this window is. Suggs is here, and he's passing to a guy here. 
Scotty Barnes has like a seven foot three wingspan. Siakam has like a seven foot three wingspan. This is a no window pass. And he throws it anyway. This, this is just a little thing that he's got to get rid of, right? We got to see it's a little bit of growth in terms of the decision-making and turnovers. You also, and then this one here, foul. You don't want to see the foul. In general, I think that Jalen Suggs has been phenomenal this season. That is the place where there's growth. There's continued growth. But you don't want to remove that edge either that he plays with because it leads to positive moments. So this one here, switched on to Ananobi on the block. I mean, <laughs> what do you say about that, right? Like, <laughs> this this is just ridiculous. This is awesome, right? Like, he's forced to pick up Ananobi in transition here in a switch scenario. Ananobi is 6'8", 7'2", wingspan, 240 pounds. Like, that dude is physically strong. And look at Suggs just stand his ground, right? He feels right when Ananobi is going to try and drop step and just watch him back up with his hips and get his hand to the ball, right? The timing is perfect. He just rips Ananobi. Ananobi, like, he, like, thinks to look at the official, and then he's like, no, I just got ripped. That was that was a mistake on my part. And then, honestly, I don't really have a problem with this pass. I think that AB should probably catch it. Like, that's right in the hands. It's, like, slightly behind him, I guess. I oh, know it's a little bit behind him. A little bit behind him. A little bit of over-aggression by Suggs, as usual. But again, you're trying to get these early transition buckets, right? If you're the Orlando Magic and you struggle a little bit in the half court offensively this year, that's fine. I'm good with that pass. I would hope Anthony Black could catch it, especially given that that's what you're empowering Jalen Suggs to do. So this next one here, Suggs. Responsible for the trailer, Ananobi. Again, cuts him off on the drive. We're going to get a switch on to Gaudy Barnes here. Guides him into the help, into Batadze. Forces the miss, right? This is this is what makes him such a ridiculous guard defender, right? You can see he's gotten stronger this year. He's just more physical. He's able to hold up on these drives, right? You know, literally a minute ago, Ananobi just got ripped on a potential post-up, so he probably doesn't want to do that. Instead, decides to run like a quick screen. They just are comfortable switching this with Barnes on to Suggs. Orlando is going to be good with this matchup. Does a great job cutting off the angle. Goes for just that little swipe there to try and bother him, but keeps it away from the body so that he's not going to get the foul either, right? Like, look at how far away this swipe is from the body. It's just to annoy Scotty more than anything. I don't think he's actually even going for the ball there. It's kind of half-hearted, but he forces the miss. It's perfect. That's picture perfect switchable defense by a guard. Next one here. This is just him recognizing I've got a miss. I've got an advantage. I'm going to try and attack. They're all Toronto at this point is all cross match, which is bizarre. 90 seconds into a half, right? Really, this needs to probably be Siakam who's stepping up here into this area and Pirtle continuing to track back because he should want to be on Batadze. They don't. Suggs just loses the ball, right? He thinks he got fouled. Suggs always thinks he got fouled. Actually, maybe did get fouled there. There's a possibility. I'll accept. Nah, maybe not. I'm good. I'm good with that no call. But he very clearly thinks he got hit on the left arm. He probably did get hit on the left arm, to be fair. You can see him. Their left, Pirtle's right arm, his left arm kind of get tied up right. Right in there. You can see Suggs, the official, complain after the play. Literally pointing to the left arm right there. I mean... Whatever. Next up, 
Paulo throws up this little wild shot. All of these little things from Suggs, they're just like chaos plays, right? That's who Suggs is. Like, he is just a chaos player. He thrives on all of the madness that occurs because he processes the game pretty quickly. He's super fast, he's super athletic, and he's trying to process the game quickly, right? This, these are the things that I loved about him pre-draft. I love the speed that he played at, but I also love the way that he saw things on the court that other guys didn't. And I thought, you know, hopefully that, as he got older, that things would slow down a little bit. He'd maintain the vision that he sees, but be able to execute it a little bit better. So far, we're seeing growth this year. I think where I was wrong is I didn't think it would take him quite as long to figure it out. I thought that he was probably, uh, I thought he was further ahead than what he was given his first couple of years in the NBA. So here, these are just situations that are really tough, right? Defenses you know, off of offensive rebounds, right? So Toronto similarly has struggled with half court offense this year. So Scotty is vacating the paint here and he's trying to get an easy bucket, hoping that Pirtle can get this rebound here. And because of that, you're creating a five on four. Where he's going forward, that was Wagner's man. Wagner's, you know, eyes looking back, right? Checking to see who gets the rebound. Pump fake into Siakam. And Suggs just looks up. Sees Franz, sees all of this space to throw this pass into. This is about as big of a window as you're going to get passing wise. Throws the live dribble underhand, right handed pass. They get the bucket, right? Next one here. Thugs coming down the court. I put this one in. Obviously, this is a miss, right? I put this one in just to showcase again. Suggs and Anthony Black, clearly what Orlando loved about these two, great positional size, if Suggs is going to be a point guard at least, great defensive instincts, but also both really high feel for the game guys and processors. So Suggs here starts with the ball. He is looking at Franz. I think that he wants Franz to come up and set a screen. He's saying, come on up. And then hopefully Batadze, AB, Paulo will clear and they'll get an empty side, which is kind of what they want to run their offense with, right? But then... You see AB pointing, no, he's actually got the mismatch, right? I think he's saying throw this ball in. Suggs is looking at here with his line of vision is that OG and Anobi's coming over to help on this mismatch. And as soon as he sees that Ananobi is going over to help, his eyes are going around looking to see who he is helping off of, right? It becomes clear that it's black and he throws the ball to black. Black misses. Again, I think this is what Orlando saw in these guys. They were looking for guys that could process quickly. that could get things moving around the perimeter. Next one here. Again, just in transition. And I just love the touch on this pass, right? Like, so this just ends up being a turnover, right? Barnes throws a really nice pass, I think, to Precious. Precious should probably catch that ball hard on guys, you know, on bigs with, uh, you know, bounce passes, let's say, into a crowd. But it hits Precious in the hands. He should probably catch it. 
Bancaro gets this, immediately sees Suggs. And Suggs is looking at a three on two, right? So you've got, obviously, Suggs one, Franz two, AB over there. And now you're just trying to see how they're going to play this, right? Additionally, if this fails, you've really got a five on three coming, right? I am terrible at drawing fours, folks. But doesn't need the trailer because Barnes, he recognizes, is cutting him off and turning his back to Wagner, even as Wagner hits the three-point line. Back turned. It's always going to be an easy finish for Wagner. He throws a beautiful bounce pass to kind of lead Wagner into that. Times it perfectly. See how hard he bounces this thing off the ground with spin, right? Makes it so that even though it's a bounce pass, Wagner's catching that thing at almost shoulder height. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Make it so that Scotty's limbs can't get in the way, right? Like the only thing that you can throw here that could end up being a wild one that gets picked for a turnover is if you throw it into Scotty Barnes' extended arm. And if he throws that, it's going to have to come in this angle. It's a smart choice for a bounce pass. Easy bucket. He's a smart player. I know he turns the ball over a lot just out of overaggression, but he's a smart guy. And then this one here, they come down. They try and figure out, oh, man, like we have an easy bucket potential. You can see literally Franz, he's mad that his man beat him, right? Like look at the head turned, our hand palm to the sky, right? Like shit. And Suggs goes up for the block. I'm going to be honest with you. I do think this one's clean. I don't really think he catches him in the body. I think that is a clean block, just straight up. His, his hand is right at the rim. I think he clearly gets ball. Ends up being a foul call from the man all the way on the other side of the court. I'm not sure who that is. He's mad. Siakam gets free throws. Ball does not lie. And Suggs just decides, you know what? I'm going to take this right down your throat. And then he scores again, gets the foul, goes nuts. This, this was an awesome Jalen Suggs game. The whole experience, the energy, the aggression, the activity, everything that you could want from Suggs, right? Everything that he brings to the table, every single attribute that made him the number five pick in the draft, right? And that has made him a valuable player so far this year. And again, he just covers ground so quickly. It's so hard to stay in front of him. When he's downhill like this, like Siakam moves well for a big guy. He moves well here. But you can gather with one hand. You don't need to slow down. It's just tough. It's really tough. Suggs is going to be good. He's going to be really, really good. He's good already. He's like a valuable, impactful player. He is going to be really good once things slow down for him. Uh, already this season has been worth 1.7 wins, according to EPM's model. Uh, he is a plus 3.8 on defense right now, which actually leads the league uh, among all players so far. He has been phenomenal on defense, and the offense is actually in the 62nd percentile even, uh, being a slightly negative on that end. He has been fantastic this season. And oh, by the way, you get the added addition of getting the energy and activity, right? So this one here sets up almost as like a double drag. 
And now he's just breaking down Siakam off the bounce, knocking that down. I mean, this is a, when you're feeling it, you're feeling it, right? So what are we running here? You know, classic double drag. Bronze here, Batadze here. The Magic do love to have Batadze as the end screener. To love to have one of Paulo or Franz as the inside screener. The reason for that is that teams tend to switch the first action on these double drags. You can see here, Ananobi plans to do that here, but Barnes gets clipped on that screen by Franz. No, he just slips. He kind of gets clipped, but it's more that he just slips, it looks like. And that's going to create the open angle. Achua has to help over here. Suggs recognizes to lift just a little bit from the corner. Forces a tough closeout. If he can hit that shot, he is literally the perfect player to play with Franz and Paulo. Great defender, somewhat creative scorer. This is not something he has done with regularity throughout the course of his NBA career to this point. Uh, it's worth bringing up the numbers just to talk about them on some level, right? Uh, being a self-creative pull-up shooter, I, I would not say has been Suggs' strong suit, but... If you're feeling it with confidence, you're feeling it with confidence. So far this season, Suggs has made 21.9 of his pull-up jumpers. <laughs> that is not a good number, but he's made up for it by making 41.2% of his catch-and-shoot jumpers, all of which are three-pointers. If he's a 40% catch-and-shoot three-point shooter and then can occasionally do stuff like this, like once per game, great. Uh and do it at like a reasonable level, but you know, hasn't been a part of his game yet. But when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. And he gets better every time out. That's the thing. Like he just continues to get better and better at basketball. Now we've got the tongue out. I mean, again, Suggs really, really feeling it. Uh, they've played, I believe three games since this, at this point, uh, I don't have the inclusive numbers on the game they played against Charlotte tonight, but over his last eight, Suggs is averaging 14.6, three rebounds, three assists, two turnovers, 48.7% from the field, 44 from three and 80 from the line. I mean, if he's going to do this. It's going to be really, really tough to play the Orlando Magic because they're going to defend. They're going to have multiple creators. Again, you're driving in transition off of made baskets, right? And this is the last clip here. They go down and score. And just look at how quick it happens, right? He has beaten two guys down the court, forcing Dennis Schroeder to open up the angle. He's got another guy coming. That's the ability that Jalen Suggs has. He's going to push in transition. He's going to defend at an elite level. He's going to make catch and shoot threes. And that's all they need him to do, right? If he does those three things for the rest of the year, Jalen Suggs is going to make an all defense team. He's going to average something like 13 points, four rebounds, three assists as a secondary creator. And he makes 36% from three. That's an incredibly valuable player to have in your ecosystem. Jalen Suggs is going to be a really good player, folks. He already is a really good player, but if the shooting comes around, given his ability to pressure defenses downhill in transition, given his ability to create transition opportunities out of thin air, the ceiling is still quite high with Jalen Suggs. It's not going to look exactly what a normal top five picks ceiling looks like. But for the Orlando Magic, a team that's 12 and five, currently near the top of the Eastern Conference, it's exactly what they need. Moving forward, to me, he's a priority. I think they got to keep him. That's the video on Jalen Suggs. Jalen Suggs, you know, has been in a remarkable, incredible basketball player this season for the Orlando Magic. Hit the like button if you like video. Hit the subscribe button if you like the video. I'll be back with a Cam Thomas video for later this week. 
That is a wild ride. I can assure you of that. Until next time, we'll talk soon.